Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. I'm here to offer you support as you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. Do you feel stuck after having been abused by a narcissist? Does your whole life feel like you can't move forward or you can't make decisions? I want to talk to you a little bit today about that and also give you some examples of how others have been feeling and how they struggle with it and maybe ways that they have worked through it. So if that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. After a lot of people have either been discarded or left a narcissistic relationship, they often feel really stuck, like they can't move forward in their life, or they actually feel stuck and bound to the narcissist in some way. That feeling is part of the trauma, and it's also a very common feeling that people have after leaving a narcissist or being discarded by a narcissist. So I want to go ahead and read you some things people have written and give a little feedback on what they have said. I think the thing that surprised me is how relentless they are. Even after he'd won in court and got contact down to fully supervised for only one hour a fortnight. And even after he'd gotten new supply and a new child, he still focuses on destroying me and trying to bring me lower and lower still. It's five years since I left. When dealing with a narc, there is no conventional end. There seems to be just this infinite untangling. Absolutely, that can happen. And it's taking pieces of your life back where you can have control that I think you find a little bit of freedom there. It's infuriating and it's endless and they don't make it easy. Even when they have a perfectly good life to move on to or whatever they have, it's um, really important at that point in your life to find a lot of self care and to find ways to show yourself that you do have some control over your life so that you don't feel completely drawn down and as you said brought lower and lower by the situation with the narcissist the better you feel about yourself the less effect they can have on you even though they're making your life miserable it's i'm sorry that's going on it's a really hard situation to be in someone else says that i haven't had any contact with them but i feel stuck in all areas of my life now i'm not sure if it's depression or what that is the common feeling i was talking about that can happen it's it's Partly because we lose our sense of agency when we've been with a narcissist. We lose our ability to act on our own will, to act on our own wants and desires. We don't even know what those are half the time. And we also get drawn down from the trauma into sort of a depressive state a lot of times. And it's sort of like it's easier to stay frozen and stuck than it is to move forward. Because at least that's a known discomfort, if that makes sense. It's not pleasant and it can keep you there for a long time. So again, a lot of self-care and working through kind of making yourself do new things, new things, new learning, finding your passion again. I mean, it's all really important to realize that recovering from narcissistic abuse is a very active recovery and it can require, you know, therapy if you need it, coaching if you need it, but also taking the initiative for yourself to try new things to move on anyway, even though you don't feel like it, and to begin making steps in your life to have some motion so that you're not stuck there forever. She goes on to talk about how she was in a class and that she couldn't concentrate and she doesn't feel like doing things like cleaning and you know taking care of things. And that's what I'm talking about is even if you don't feel like it, sometimes we have to maybe set a timer for how long you're gonna clean and just clean and don't let your emotions rule the actions that you're making in your life for every single step that you're making. If we wait for our emotions to feel like doing something, we're never going to do something, at least a lot of the time. So, you know, taking on what you know you can take on, maybe a class is too much and it's expensive and it's, you know, it's a lot of commitment. So maybe taking on something that is more self-initiated and lo less costly just to get yourself moving might help. Also, like I said, setting a timer for things so that you do the thing anyway, because putting yourself into motion creates more motion. At least it can. At the same time, working on these feelings, why do I feel stuck? Where, where is this coming from? What beliefs do I have around it can help you to sort of release the emotional part of it. Another person writes, no contact as well, but feeling stuck, not being able to move on and let go. 
the things he did just replay in my head. For things like that, it can be really helpful to stop thinking about it. And what I mean is literally tell yourself, stop. Create some sort of mantra for yourself that you say to yourself when you hear this and interrupt the pattern. Interrupt the pattern by getting up and doing something else, putting motion into your body, putting action into your life so that you're not stuck ruminating in your head over the things that the person did to you. That's sort of a trauma pattern that can happen where we get stuck in repeating and replaying and replaying and replaying the events that happened. And the truth is what you're replaying is a past. And every time you replay the past, you're trying to bring it into the present moment. Well, in the present moment, that is not what's going on. And so a lot of mindfulness exercises can help, but also interrupting those patterns and stopping those thoughts through, I mean, there's a lot of techniques out there, but one is simply just to tell yourself to stop, give yourself replacement words. This is in my past. I'm going to be in the present moment, something like that. And then actually do something to be in the present moment, you know, um, pay attention to what's around you, pick out things that are a certain color in the room, notice that your feet are on the floor, anything that brings you back into the moment. Another person writes, I've been in no contact for two months and I feel stuck because I keep pushing aside the lies. I'm isolating and I don't like to leave my house. I feel like I'm walking around in a movie or something, like it's going to be, like it's going on all around me and I just can't connect for some reason. You're describing a very common feeling, which is dissociation and that, feeling of disconnect and like you're in a movie or like you're in a fog or in a dream. I mean, it really is from the trauma. So, you know, again, things like I mentioned before with mindfulness can help. Um, doing mindfulness practices can help, but also realizing that you are two months, no contact is still pretty new. It's for the, in the terms of narcissistic abuse, that's still fairly early on. So you know, don't stress about it too much. But at the same time, notice when you are present. Notice when you do feel in your body and celebrate it because those moments are when you're being in the moment that you're actually in. And sometimes we get so wrapped up in worrying about what's wrong with us, we forget to look at the things that are actually okay. Dissociation like that, where you feel like you're in a dream or in a movie, um, after narcissistic abuse, I'm not talking about a dissociative disorder. I'm talking about the type that comes from trauma like this. And it's basically a the defense mechanism because if you feel all the pain at once, it's just overwhelming. So it, you only get little bits of it. And so it keeps you kind of numb and detached and sort of in a fog. So when you do have feelings, allowing yourself to feel them can be important. And having support can be important. This is a really good thing if you do use a therapist to talk to them about because they have a lot of techniques they can help you with to get you back into the moment. This is another area that coaching can help because you can learn to see where you are and how to move forward. You also have to give yourself time. This is, like I said, it's new at two months and self-care and appreciating what you do have, gratitude journals, gratitude in the morning, gratitude before bed. Anytime you can get it in there so that you can see that life is not all the, the abuse, that there's way more to life, and that you can actually feel the gratitude and feel the goodness come in. And if your thoughts are constantly going back to the narcissist and back to the abuse, you might want to find something to concentrate on. Pick a, a new hobby, pick a new interest, anything that isn't related to psychology or narcissism or anything that is interesting and engaging for your mind, that isn't drawing you back to the same topic something that actually brings you into the moment and through into the future. In other words, something that's forward thinking for you, something that you can see using in your life or something that might be helpful for the life that you live. So that for putting the energy, instead of putting all that energy back into the past and into the trauma, you're putting it into something in the future. The feelings are going to be there and you need to feel them as you feel them, but you don't need to keep ruminating on them because that's not going to get you moving forward. It's going to keep you locked in the past. It's very active to recover from this sometimes. At least pieces of it are. And for a lot of us, it's extremely active within ourselves. Someone adds, they're feeling stuck in the cycle of excitement, albeit negative. Ordinary relationships feel stayed. Ordinary relationships feel sort of like they're mundane or boring. And only the excitement or drama 
adrenaline rush really of the narcissistic abuse type relationships feel normal. I'm putting words in your mouth, but maybe that's correct. Um, and if it's not, it certainly is something that people have talked about before. And if you feel stuck there, then looking at your own patterns can help. Looking at why you experience this, how far back does it go? How can you heal this? What are ways you can get the same adrenaline rush that are healthy and not hurting you and not causing you to be under the influence of a narcissistic person? Noticing that you're stuck there in a cycle of toxic, basically toxic energy, and, and you're stuck in a cycle of um, feeling the excitement or rather adrenaline from the drama that comes from being around a narcissist is a great observation to have in yourself. You can see that at a certain point, it can become a choice. Once you break those trauma bonds and you get to the point where you can see these kinds of things, then you can make a choice for how you want to live your life. You don't have to stay stuck in that cycle. It's okay that ordinary healthy relationships feel less than exciting. It actually is okay. And is that the worst thing in the world to have a less than exciting relationship in your life? I would say after narcissistic abuse, no, it's probably not. But it feels way less charged and way less exciting. And the thing is, until you release the toxic people from your life and you, and you completely move on, if that is your case, then that pull of the addiction to the excitement or adrenaline or whatever it is you're feeling from the trauma bond with the narcissist will have a hold over you. Once you completely go no contact and remove yourself from that, then there's a little more room to see that these more mundane relationships or however they are feeling for you, more flat or less exciting, are actually much more full of depth than you realize they are. We don't let ourselves go in far enough with relationships that feel boring when we have a lot of drama on the other parts of our lives. So getting rid of the one can, can stop that strange contrast between boring and super exciting. And then you can work your way through to see what is it within these less exciting relationships that can be built and grown and how is that exciting. And I would bet that if, over time, you will find them much more fulfilling. So another person says they feel stuck in the cycle of abuse that never truly ends when you share a child. There's constant hoovering and refusal to let me move on. He destroyed the relationship I had after him. It's awful. Again, that goes back to the first topic, but yeah, there's a lot of people feeling that way. Um, again, it's the constant pull of the narcissist when you share a child because obviously they still have some influence in your life. Or they still have some presence in your life, if nothing else. So the way to reduce the influence is to gray rock, to learn to gray rock really, really well so that it, it's very businesslike, it's cut and dry. Your interest is only the interest of the child, the, and your interest is not anything to do with them. And if they start doing anything that is personally pulling you toward a Hoover or toward any form of contact that is friendly, you know it's not friendly because they're a narcissist, and you can just gray rock it. That is your biggest tool here, is learning to do that really, really well. So someone says, my biggest problem after my break from the ex-narc was overcoming major anxiety and depression. And how do you move forward without taking any toxic traits from the narc into the new relationship? Well, that is why we recommend, or most people recommend, a longer healing time and a longer time alone so that you can take the time to look at the effects that this has had on you and also the reasons that we even get into these relationships to begin with. People always talk about becoming narc proof and I think that is a possibility, but I think a lot of it lies in how you view yourself and how your, your standards are and what your tolerances are. We have, a lot of us have very high tolerance for negative people and we need to lower that. We need to lower those tolerances. So how you don't take toxic traits from one relationship into the other is you learn what traits that you picked up and you work on them. I just did a video the other day about narcissistic fleas and conflict, things like that. You know, you work through realizing, oh, I, have a, I don't have the best communication style with conflict anymore. I need to work on that. Or I don't have the best 
I mean, it really depends on which traits you're talking about, but there's ways to work through each one. Obviously, you don't, you didn't get there of your own accord. You were programmed to behave this way. You were taught and groomed to behave a certain way. And so you can unlearn it and you can retrain yourself. You just have to have a lot of self-awareness and pay attention to what it is you're doing that you would like to make changes. No. After being divorced from my ex narc for over a year now, I still feel stuck in many ways. I've let my boundaries down on occasion and I feel like I set myself back in my healing. Co-parenting has been a real challenge. I think my heart hasn't caught up with my head. I fell for the love bombing and his claims that he was changing and I wanted to be a family again and to work on a relationship. That can happen with a Hoover. It has nothing to do with your intelligence or your it's, it's part of, you know, why no contact is important. And obviously you have low contact when you have kids so that it gets more, it's more difficult. And you're right. Learning your boundaries is really important and getting firm with them. And it's also realizing that they can't change. They can't change. They can't change. So, you know, once you actually let that sink in and that that's a reality, they cannot change your head has starts to overrule a little bit that cognitive dissonance from your head and your heart not sinking and not communicating the same way is really hard to manage when we have a hoover we have to remember we can't listen to our heart we have to listen to logic when there is a hoover going on we have to understand what it is this is a hoover anytime the narcissist is nice to you after there's been a discard or you have left them it is a hoover that's that's what we call it and we call it that for a reason you're being sucked back in there is no changing and there is no, you know, healing your family. Your family is you and your children now. And that's the part that needs healing. You're the part that needs healing. The narcissist can't change. They can't heal. There's nothing to heal. They are as they are. So when you feel like you're listening to your heart or when you are in a Hoover and you're listening to your heart, yeah, that's what happens. You get sucked back in when you're listening to your head and logic and, and realizing that it's going to hurt and your heart is going to be screaming at you, telling you to do something different. This is one thing support groups are really good for. This is another thing that coaching is good for to really understand, set your boundaries and realize what it is that you have going on that you need to work on in yourself to resist these hoovers and to break these trauma bonds. It can be important to remember that when you're dealing with the narcissist still, you have to learn to put up boundaries. You have to learn new ways of dealing with them because the ways that work within the relationship obviously don't work. And if you have to deal with them, you have to learn to deal with them on a different playing field. You have to step to keep your heart way out of it and deal with them in a very businesslike and very cut and dry manner. Honestly, gray rock is the best technique for that for any of you still dealing with a narcissist and keeping things civil and keeping things matter of fact for the sake of the children and keeping the topics in line with care for the children or whatever it is, if it's a business, whatever it is you have to have communication with them about, that that is the only topic that is game to talk about and it will only be spoken about under certain circumstances and in certain ways. And you have to hold your boundaries there. You, have, you just have to, because they, if they get back into your heart, you're hoovered back in. If they get back into your head, you're lost. So. It's, it's really an important technique to learn. If the narcissist is not in your life and you're stuck ruminating about them, this seems to be a theme I'm reading over and over on this. If you're no longer with the narcissist, but you are stuck in your head with the narcissist so that you can't get them out of your head, the way out is the way is going inward to yourself. Self-care is your way out. Self-care self-examination, self-reflection, all of that is your way out. You have to look at your own life and realize this is the life you have to live and you do not need to repeat this trauma over and over again up here. It, it's over and you need to move forward. And the way to move forward is to focus on what you can control, focus on the care for yourself and those around you. But really it comes down to, there's different things that can happen. A lot of people focus on the abuse and get really angry. And that is actually part of healing and that's, it's okay. It, it, it's a lot of people can use that anger to move forward. And then a lot of people get stuck there. So you see, it's, it's feeling what you're feeling in the moment and realizing that you don't need to stay there forever. You don't want to spend the rest of your life worrying about this person. You would, you know, most of us would like to move on 
and have lives that do not include thoughts like these. The best way I know of personally is to begin to see where in your life you can put attention. Because if you're putting all of your attention on that thing, it may feel like it's happening out of your control and you have no control over what you're thinking, but you actually do have the ability to have some control over your thoughts, even if it's for moments at a time. You can shift your thoughts. You can stop these thoughts. You really, you really can. You can get there and you can do it. I'd like to offer you some hope that there is a way to get unstuck, that putting motion into your life in tiny increments through self-care and Sometimes it can be a matter of finding something more exciting than the trauma that you're feeling. If you had to jump into action to save another person, or if you had to jump into action to help someone else, you most likely could and would. And what I'm saying is you can do that for yourself. You can jump into action to save yourself. So if you see that your life is ticking away as you sit and have these thoughts of a narcissist, and I'm not talking one or two months out, that is really new talking when this goes on for years, that getting stuck in the patterns of being stuck, if you realize that is a pattern in your life, you don't need to stay there. There is hope and you can find your way out. Again, this is active healing. This is not a passive healing. We have to take charge and we have to take our life seriously enough. And we have to realize we are important and, we, and that we're important enough to do this work for, that we're important enough to give ourselves the care that we need in order to get better in order to feel better and in order to move on with our life and to live a thriving life. So take care of yourself. And again, my name is Lise Colucci and I am one of the life coaches at Queen Being. See you next time.